your basic projectile motion problem. I'm going to go through all the details. So here's the problem. I made this up. Ball is launched off a table. Pew, boom. And we want to know how far it goes. So suppose that we know the initial velocity, we know the initial angle, we know the height and the mass, which I kind of put in there just to say, hey, we don't really need the mass. Uh, so where does it land? First, what, what does projectile motion mean? So if I'm over here, if the ball's right there, I have a downward gravitational force, mg, like that. And if I use Newton's second law, it says f net in the, that's net, in the x direction is uh, mass times acceleration in the x direction. F net in the y direction, that's a y, I'm having trouble there, is mass times acceleration in the y direction. So there's no forces in the x direction, right? Th there's only that downward gravitational force. So this is zero, and the mass doesn't matter. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. So right there, I can say, well, if my acceleration is zero, then I, I know that I have the following kinematic equation. X final equals X initial plus VX times T. There's no, there's no acceleration term there because it's not accelerating. That's an important equation. Now, in the Y direction, the force is equal to negative MG, right? Because it's down and this is a component, so it's negative MG. Uh, and if I, again, the mass cancels, Right? So I get the, the acceleration in the y direction is negative g. And that gives me the following equation. In the y motion, I know that the y final is equal to y initial plus vy initial t minus 1 half g t squared. It's plus 1 half a t squared, but a is negative g. So we get that. Now the nice thing about this is these two one-dimensional motions have the same time. So whatever it takes to do in the y motion is the same time it takes to do in the x motion. Now there's one other thing that we need to consider, and that's how do I, if I know the velocities launch at an angle, how do I know the uh, initial y velocity and the x velocity? Well, remember, suppose I have a velocity like this, v0 at an angle theta. This would be my x velocity that would be my y velocity. So this is vx and this is vy0. And notice I put vy0 because the y velocity changes. That's the initial velocity. But the x velocity doesn't change at all. So I don't need to put 0. It just, it's always the same. But since x and y are perpendicular, this makes a right triangle. Now I can use my sine and cosine rules, right? So cosine of the angle theta is adjacent vx divided by v0. If I solve that for vx, I get vx equals v0 cosine theta. And then if I take the sine of the angle theta, that's vy divided by vx. So if I solve for vy0, I get vy0 equals v0 sine theta. So now we just need to use this generic, this is all generic projectile motion stuff, for this particular problem. And you'll notice that in my x motion, if I pick this as my origin, I can pick wherever I want, I'm gonna pick that as my origin, uh, so that my initial x is zero, my final x, that's what I wanna find. Now for my y motion, actually I'm gonna put this as my origin, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put y equals zero down here. I think that just makes more sense to most people. If that's the case, my final y is going to be at the ground, it's going to be zero. My initial y is going to be h, and I need to find my x velocity and my y velocity. Now, which one of these could I solve for time? Well, if I don't know xf and I don't know time, I have two things I can't solve for here. But if I go down here, because I know the final velocity, the, I mean the final position, the initial position, the initial velocity, I only know one thing that I, there's only one thing I don't know here the time. Okay, so we're going to use this to solve for the time, and then we'll plug it in up there. Let's jump over to another sheet of paper and write down, uh, let's start with the y motion. So my y motion, y final, equals y initial plus vy initial t minus one half g t squared. And I'm going to go ahead and find focus. I'm going to find focus. Yeah. So let's go ahead and find don't do that. Why is it doing that? I don't like that. Hello, camera. 
Okay, behave. I'll write it right here. I won't move my hand too much. I'm having I'm having camera issues, that's for sure. And I don't even know how to turn off the autofocus, um, which is strange. But so let's go ahead and find the value for here. We know the final y is zero. Uh, let's find that we know the initial y is 0 0.87 meters, right? I was given that. This is really annoying. He didn't do this before. I'm going to have to put it right there. Uh, Vy initial, don't focus, okay, is equal to V0, which is 3.2 times the sine of 35. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that as a number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get my my little calculator right here. Let's use let's actually put it in there. On clear clear. Okay, it's clear. There can you see that? Uh, 3.2. And you'll notice that I do have my calculator in degrees mode. Right, it's in degrees. 3.2 times sine of 35 close parenthesis equals. So I get 1.84. Let's put it this 1.84. So if I put all my values in here, I have 0 equals 0 0.87. I'm going to leave off the units for now, plus 1.84t, and then g is 9.8, half that's 4.9, so minus 4.9t squared. Now, how do you solve this for t? That's, that's the question. How do I solve that for t? Um, because I can't just factor out the t. If I add that to the other side, I still have a t there. I divide by t, I, I get rid of that one, but I'm not rid of that one. So there is no real easy way to solve this except for using the quadratic equation. So remember that uh, if I have a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, that's a quadratic equation. The solution is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over 2a. So we need to put in, in this case, b is this, right? It's the, it's the term in front of the t or the x. a is negative 4.9 and c is 0.87. So let's do it with the plus. t equals, I'm going to write it out, negative b, so it's negative 1.84 plus, not plus one, sorry, the square root of b squared 1.84 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9, so plus 4.9, uh, times c, which is this, that's a point and that's a times, uh, 0 0.87. All of that's in the square root, and then all of that divided by 2a, and a is negative 4.9, multiply that by, by 2, I get negative 9.8. Now, if you want to enter this cal in your calculator all at once, just be careful, okay? Just be careful because there's order of operations and stuff like that. Um, there are online quadratic equation solvers that you can use, but let's just see if we can do this. Clear, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put down my pen because I'm, I'm going to make a mistake. Now, I'm dividing the whole thing by negative 9.8. Just to be safe, I'm going to put parentheses. When in doubt, parentheses, negative 1.84 plus the square root, square root of all this stuff. So I have 1.84 squared plus 4 times 4.9 times 0.87, close parentheses for my square root close parentheses for this top, divided by negative 9.8. Now, I don't need to put parentheses if I use my negative thing, if I use negative 9.8 like that. And I get negative, negative 0 0.27 seconds. Now, that's not good. We don't want a negative. So let's go through here and do the same thing, but replace this and put the minus sign there. So I'm going to do the exact same calculation, but I'm not going to have a plus. I'm going to have the minus. You get two solutions for the quadratic equation. Clear. Parentheses. Negative 1.84 minus square root 1.84 squared plus 4 times 4.9 times 0.87, square root, close parentheses, numerator, dis, close parentheses, divided by negative 9.8.
and I get 0 0.6, 0 0.649 seconds. And so these two both mean something, okay? Just so you know, we're, this is my, my quadratic equation in time. It's y versus time, and it's, in, it's a quadratic equation. And we're trying to find uh, the times when y is equal to zero. We're trying to find the real roots of that equation. And there's two. There's one right there, and then there's one back over here in time. That's not, this is actually a space trajectory, but it looks the same. And so that negative time is the one that if you trace this back in time, it looks like it started from... Uh, 0.27 seconds ago, it was at is at y equals zero. But we don't want that one. We want this one right here. So that's my time. Now I can go over to the x motion. So in the x motion, remember I had x final is x initial plus v x t. So I'm gonna I know x initial is zero. I need to find v x. V x is going to be equal to 3.2 times cosine 35, and that's let's put it in the calculator. Clear. 3.2 times cosine 35, close parentheses, equals 2.62 meters per second. And then I can find my x final. x final is going to be 2.62 meters per second, leaving off that, times my time, 0 0.649. And you'll notice meters per second times seconds gives me meters, so that's good. Let's just do this, times 0.649 equals... 1.7. The end. I mean, it's it's a tough problem. Um, you know, it's easy to get lost in all the stuff. Now, I have noticed that some people made a mistake when I assigned this problem uh, right here. They they said this is positive and that's negative. And so I suspect what happened is that they put the negative out in front of the whole thing. Uh, and the negative just goes with the b squared on top of that, right? It's negative b. It's not negative of everything. Now, if you use an online quadratic equation solver, you won't make that mistake because it does it for you. I mean, you should be able to do it this way. Um, but that's that. That's our answer. The end.